All right, today we are going to talk about the biochemical pathway with mutations that cause Leshenyhan syndrome in the enzyme HPRT. Um, now, this right here is what is known as a biochemical pathway, and this look, might look terrifying, this might look scary because there's lots of words on here that are huge that people don't know, that, and there's these arrows going all over the place, so what is this? Um, I've actually had other biotech majors, uh, I'll show them a biochemical pathway look, looks like this, and they will say, what is that? Get that thing away from me, um, which I find to be quite humorous. Um, but it, biochemical pathways can be your friend, they don't have to be scary. I'm just going to go over how you use them real quick. So you might have, you have your reactants, and you just follow the arrows, and you end up going, they'll end up telling you where the chemical reactants will lead reactions will lead. So these reactants up here will eventually become IMP through quite a few number of steps. That's what a bunch of arrows together means. Um, IMP can become AS, AS can become AMP, which can in turn be turned into ADP and ATP, um, which is the energy, the main energy currency the cell uses. And it can also, um, these can also go this way, turn back into AMP, and go Oops. Um, they can actually go around this way, become inosine. So there's a lot of a lot of different things here. You just follow the yellow brick road. If you want to get from point, it's like a road map. If you want to get from point A to point B, you just follow the road map. Um, but you have to keep in mind that there's a lot of one-way streets. Um, so this is that's the basics of how a biochemical pathway chart works. Now, in the case of um, Let's take now. Let's take a look at IMP and say that um, we want to have it go turn into. Uh, I don't know. We'll say it, we'll have it turn into adenine, and then we'll end up having adenine go back and become be recycled back into IMP again. Then you might go this way, follow the arrows, adenine. You go this way, then you end up becoming IMP again. There's lots of different. Lots of different ways things can happen. The cell has, the cell is actually very brilliantly put together. It's able to keep all these things in exactly the right balances that we need, um, except of course in the rare cases where there's a mutation that totally throws things off. One of the examples being Leshenyhan syndrome. Um, with Leshenyhan syndrome, we have a mutation in the HPRT gene, and that can cause it might not completely destroy the function of the enzyme. It could, but it might cause the enzyme to be at like 1.5% efficiency is the numbers that I've read online. Now, that doesn't mean there's 1.5% as much of the enzyme. There might still be just as much enzyme or even more present. Um, it just isn't operating at the levels that it needs to operate at. It's like a computer moving very, very slowly. It's inefficient. Um, it's not working the way it's supposed to. It's a janitor going at a snail's pace. You know, something that's not operating efficient efficiently, you know, uh, and any janitors out there, please don't take offense at that one. Um, but anyway, um, because I know most of you work very, very hard. Um, anyway, let's, uh, moving on, we go, f if we want to go from guanine, let's have a, uh, let's go from IMP over to GMP. IMP, XMP, GMP, and say we want, GMP wants to become guanazine, and Let's say we want to recycle this. We want to have this go back to GMP. We'll go to guanine and... Uh-oh. There is a break in the pathway here. HPRT is not working because it has a mutation that is causing it not to function properly. Now, so we... What happens is we might have an overproduction, overproduction of guanine. We have too much of it built up. And so we'll end up coming over here to xanthine. And xanthine will end up going down to uric acid. Same thing here, IMP might go to inosine, and we might want to recycle the inosine to hypoxanthine, and say there's too much of a buildup here, oh, okay, we'll go to xanthine and uric acid. Now the problem, one of the big problems uh, with um, Leshenyhan syndrome is there is a buildup of uric acid. This causes gout and things like this. It causes also uh, extra uric acid in the urine. Um, now I'm not going to, I don't know if it's exactly what causes a uh, the psychological um, issues. Um, I need to double check on that. Um, sorry, guys, I have to feign integrance this one time in the videos. Um, 
you know, I'm only human. However, um, on a biochemical level, this is what we're seeing. This is why there's a buildup of uric acid. This is why there's a problem with the production, uh, with recycling of different molecules back to IMP, back to GTP. Um, this whole pathway that's supposed to happen is really destroyed. It's like we knocked out a bunch of one-way streets. So it's like we knocked out a one-way street here, and so the cars went here in the one-way street. And the only way they could go, because these are one-way streets, is go down this way and end up in New York Acidville. Um, same thing over here. They got on this, like, they got on this like British intersection, and they ended up going to Guanine, and they only had one way to turn. So they had to go to Xanthine, and again, they end up in uric acidville. Um, so this is why there is a buildup of uric acid um, when you have the mutation that causes Leshnai hand disease. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please click the link for to go to my Lesh Nihan homepage. And also feel free to check out my blog where I have a lot of information on other um, things. Um, this is Greg, out.